Welcome to the Marriage Steps podcast where developing a long-lasting, happy relationship is the status symbol to achieve. And following my six marriage steps is a path to help get you there. I'm your host, Dr. Wyatt Fisher, a licensed psychologist specializing in marriage counseling. The Marriage Steps podcast is listener supported, so to help keep it on the air so couples worldwide can receive hope and help for their marriage, please consider becoming a monthly supporter by going to patreon.com forward slash marriage steps. Today I'm going to talk about four steps to a successful holiday. So under the pandemic, holiday season is going to look different for a lot of us. You may or may not be visiting family. Traditions are going to be disrupted on some level for a lot of people. However, there's still some strategies we need to consider on how to make it through the holidays as successful as possible. So I'm going to go through four ideas. The first one is make a plan for events. For example, so if you celebrate on Christmas Day, if you celebrate Christmas, think about what should we do on Christmas Day? Maybe we're not with our family this year, but how can we still celebrate? with our immediate family that we live with in our house. What kind of traditions can we do? What kind of meal should we have? What kind of activities should we participate in? If you have kids, how should that look? Think about the plan. Think about in advance all the things you wanna do on Christmas day and before Christmas or after Christmas, but make a plan with your partner so you're on the same page so you know what you're gonna do, you know what ingredients you need for the meal, you know when you're gonna make those Christmas cookies, make a plan. And then you can prepare for that plan in advance so it's not last minute, so you're not scrambling. And plans help us feel in control. And when we feel in control, our stress goes down. When there's not a plan and things are left to the last minute and things are spontaneous, often that increases stress. When you're creating that plan, also discuss with your partner, how can we split the workload so that the workload of the holiday festivities don't fall just to one partner? So as you're developing the plan with your spouse, be thinking about and discussing, okay, which of these tasks should I take? Which ones should you take? Which ones should we do together? You want it to feel even. A lot of times around the holidays, the bulk of the work can fall to one partner and then that creates resentment. So think about the plan, develop the plan in advance, and then think about how to share the workload with that plan to execute it. Number two, make a plan for you. We need increased self-care through the holidays because stress goes up, and as stress goes up, usually self-care goes out the window. So instead, we need to bring self-care back. What are some small self-care activities you can do through the holidays for your mental health? What is that for you? Maybe it's having little pockets of time to read a novel you're really into. I'm reading a book right now. I love to read biographies to learn from other famous people and mistakes they made. That's one of my hobbies I like to do. And right now I'm reading a book on Alexander Hamilton and it's fascinating. It's really interesting to read about his life, what he went through, the mistakes he made, the triumphs he had. What is it for you? What are some of your hobbies that you could do through the holidays intentionally for self-care? We all need to recharge our batteries. We need time to replenish. You can't fill a cup from an empty pitcher. And a lot of us give, give, and give, and give until we're burned out and we collapse. And then we're not good for anybody. So intentionally try to make some time for self-care through the holiday season. What is it for you? Do you play a musical instrument? Do you like to read? Maybe you need to get outside in nature. Whatever it is, but prioritize and make a plan for how to cultivate your self-care through the holidays. Number three is make a plan for your marriage. It's very easy for marriage to get put on the back burner during the holiday season because things are busy and you may have family visiting you, or you may have all these festivities that you do, and before you know it, you've spent almost no time with your partner. And one thing that's tricky in marriage is that our marital needs don't stop. They don't stop just because you're going through a stressful season. They don't stop just because it's the holidays. They don't stop just because things are tough in life. Marital needs are consistent. They're persistent. So to make, make sure both of you are meeting those marital needs, you need to talk about that. You need to talk about with your partner 
What are your top marital needs that you would love to still have met through the holiday season? Now, it doesn't mean that all of your marital needs are gonna be met perfectly. You need to show some grace. Maybe you need to lower your standards a little bit to make it through the holiday season. But make sure you discuss this with your partner. What's your marital needs that you would love to have met through the holidays? And what's a realistic level of getting those met throughout the holidays? Maybe for some of you, you have a top need for emotional intimacy. Maybe that's one of your fillers in your love buckets. So you would talk about with your partner, how can we stay connected emotionally? Maybe for some of us, that means we need to wake up early before the guests are awake, before the kids are awake, we need to go for a walk every morning to stay emotionally connected so we can talk. And that's when we can do our head heart check, we can process, we can vent, whatever we need to do, but that can keep us connected. Maybe it's first thing in the morning, we go for a walk. For others of you, maybe it's late at night, you need to get together and you need to pull away from your family or from visitors and you need to go into your room, go to bed early, nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, so you can have some quality time together to talk and catch up. For others of you, perhaps the top marital need is sexual intimacy. Maybe that's a filler for you. So then talk about that with your partner. How can we stay sexually connected through the holidays? What could that look like? What are the options? You know, maybe we can create some type of schedule or some type of plan so we can go into our room early at night, maybe every third day during the holiday season or every two days to have some sexual activity so we can stay connected on a physical level. Also, as you're making this plan with your partner, make a plan for how to interact with difficult family members. So if you do have difficult family coming to travel to visit you or you're traveling to visit them, develop a strategy with your partner on how to handle those family members. How can you make sure you don't fall into any potholes? How can you not take the bait if they start getting ornery with you? And if you notice your partner is starting to interact with a difficult family member, how can you intervene to help? How can you be a team? to approach challenging moments with family members through the holidays. Make a plan for that as well, because you want to feel like you're a unified front going through the holidays. You want to feel like you have each other's back, and that's not going to happen by accident. That's not going to happen spontaneously. So talk through intentionally how you can tend to one another's needs, marital needs, and how can you as a couple handle difficult family members. Number four is you wanna stay in budget. When it comes to the holidays, it's so easy to overspend. And right now under the pandemic, more than ever, most of us are under some type of financial hardship. And so now more than ever, it's very important to stay in budget when it comes to gift giving. There's lots of different ways to give gifts, whether it's our time, our talents, or our treasures. But when it comes to treasures and we're giving gifts with presents, get on the same page with your partner. How much should we spend on our kids? How much can we afford in cash? How much should we spend on our in-laws? How much can we afford in cash? You wanna make it fair, how much you spend on everybody, and you wanna be on the same page. All too often, couples get in conflict because they start spending money on family members before getting on the same page and setting a budget with their partner. So the first step is talk through with your partner, how much should we spend on our kids, if you have any, how much should we spend on our extended family members, and you may need to negotiate. Partner A may think you should spend X amount of dollars, partner B may think you need to spend Y amount of dollars, so you may need to give and take, bounce the ball, share power until you compromise and reach a win-win on how much you should spend and how much you can afford in cash. The last thing you need after a stressful holiday is debt. Debt is crippling. Debt is so heavy. Debt makes us feel like we're suffocating. So the last thing you want after a stressful holiday is debt. So instead, get on the same page, create a budget, and then stay in that budget so you're spending in cash. And by the way, moving forward, if you're not already, Make sure you work into your budget Christmas. Use this Christmas as an opportunity to think about how much do we tend to spend? What's an average amount that we spend on our kids, on each other, on our extended family? Negotiate that number, get into agreement, and then work that number into your budget so that from here, moving forward, 
building up until next Christmas, you're already starting to save for the presents. It's a part of your budget. So that when the next Christmas comes, you have the money because you've been saving for it all year round. And that will greatly reduce your stress around the holidays because you'll know we have the money for this. We've already been saving up the whole year. It's been in our budget. Then you can spend with peace next Christmas if you haven't already done that this year for this Christmas. So those are four tips on how to have a successful holiday. Number one, make a plan for events so you and your partner are on the same page and divvy up the responsibility of executing those events so not so one partner is not sharing most of the burden and most of the work. You wanna shoulder that together. Number two, make a plan for you. What kind of self-care do you need and how can you prioritize that through the holidays so you can recharge your batteries? Number three, make a plan for your marriage. What are the marital needs you need, your partner needs? How can you tend to that through the holidays and make a plan how you can handle difficult in-laws, difficult family members, so you're on the same page. And number four, stay in budget. Create a budget, talk about how much money you're gonna spend on gifts, and then use that as a guide so you don't go over budget, so you don't have debt after the stressful holiday season. Thank you for listening to the Marriage Steps podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to click the five stars and leave a review. For more marriage resources, go to my website, drwyattfisher.com. And if this podcast has made a positive impact on your marriage, be sure to email me. I would love to have you on the show and have you do a we're in love scream. My email is info at drwyattfisher.com. And remember, your marriage is alive. So if you care for it and you nurture it, it will grow. But if you deprive it and neglect it, it will wilt and die. The choice is up to you. Take care.